Welcome back to Sports Extra. Time now for a very special segment. It's often said that the sky is the limit, but there are some people in this world who dare to go even beyond that and have actually aimed at reaching the sky and they have been possible to do so. We've got very two special people in studios and we're going to talk about that and the potential that our country has to offer when it comes to mountain climbing and all sorts of adventure sports as well. First of all, I've been joined in studios. Lucky enough, it's an honor to be having with me Mr. Simone, who's an Italian mountaineer. And during an attempt to the wall of Mount Lotse at 8,000, it's known that he abandoned the climb to search, rescue and save his English mountaineer, Tom Moores. And that is something special as well. Sir, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Very well, very well. I feel at home here uh, really? in Pakistan. Yeah, well, really. we're, we're very glad to have you on the show. And I think it's great to, that we talk. And we also have Ms. Tamara, who is also a mountaineer. And she became the youngest female climber, age 23, to have reached the main summit of Mount Lhotse. I think at 23, I was playing video games. So <laughs> very, very a big achievement. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, thank it's you. great having you. Good evening to you as well. Right, uh, Simone, uh, you mentioned you feel at home. How has been Pakistan been so far for you? Well, it's more than 20 years that I come in Pakistan and they feel safe and welcome. <laughs> so every time I talk to my friend, I'm going to Pakistan, they are watching me. <laughs> Why are you going there? 20 because years. they feel safe and welcome. Yes, more than 20 years. And I have the privilege to discover Pakistan and they climb all over the world in any continents mm. of the planet, even in Antarctica. And believe me, the Pakistan has the highest potential of climbing, fishing, paragliding, mm. uh, skiing and so on. In any other corner in the planet, there are not so many unclimbed and wild mountains like here in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But you have to believe in that. Yeah. This is, could be the, your future economy. Yeah, we're definitely. And the, the Prime Minister right now is very, very strict of the fact that we've got some great potential in tourism up north. And he's very keen on promoting that. Tamara, uh, you told me this is probably the sixth time that you're here. And uh, do you feel the same as Simone does? Yeah, um, I like a lot Pakistan because it's so wild. Mm. Uh, so because in Europe there... There are a lot of ski lift and uh, a, a lot more people. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel really good when I can be alone somewhere. And so the high altitude is the perfect place to mm -hmm. be for me. Um, I had already really good experiences in Pakistan. I felt always safe. I mm -hmm. did some good. Um, yeah, one trip I did with ski mountaineering skis with mm -hmm. my father. Uh, starting from Shimshal, coming down to Ascole, then I climbed K2 in 2014 without oxygen. Mm. So um, I have very good memories from this so country. So it's just you and nature at the end, and that's what you like. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, you talked about a lot of potentials. Uh, up north, uh, K2, one of the most difficult climbs that we've heard from mountaineers, yeah. definitely. Yeah. We've got Naga Parbat, known as the Killer Mountain itself as well, and so many, Rakaposhi Peak is there yeah. as well, so so many peaks. Uh, there is so much potential, as you mentioned. 20 years you've been coming here, you've been going to those places, conquering those mountains. What more can we do in terms of the facilities that we can give to international mountaineers to make them uh, more comfortable in these kinds of places? Honestly, you are doing already a lot. For example, the last things that happened, the facilities to get mm. the, the, the visa mm. is something that impress the global community because before it was always a nightmare to get the visa mm -hmm. and if you have to work so much to get the visa it means you are not welcome mm -hmm. now drastically everything changed everybody can get in one week online mm -hmm. and this was perfect the second things you should start to map your country mm -hmm. i always compare to nepal where mm -hmm. i had been this is my 61 uh, expedition. Mm -hmm. If you go in Nepal, in any valley you want to do, you can buy a map, you can feel all the tracks, you, you can know anything. What is missing here is a, a mapping work, mm -hmm. because you can get a map from the, the maybe the Baltoro and Ketu Valley, mm -hmm. but this is one of the thousand valleys that you have. That you have. So yeah. it's very important to make people know how many are the valley, how many are the mountains, the, the name and so on. Because you can have future for dozen and dozen of years. Mm -hmm. But the people, when they are here, mm -hmm. they need to know where to go, watching the map, 
looking for the mountains on mm -hmm. there are a lot of trekking agency here mm -hmm. that they they are working since many years this is also good but now it's important to do this step first the map second also the accommodation for example in nepal in any valley you have lodges mm -hmm. they are like small refugees okay here you don't have anything mm -hmm. in one side is good because as i said tamara you go I love like nature yeah. yeah love nature in the other side you have also to think that not all the tourists are like me and Tamara. Mm. There are people who love to go in the mountain and sit in a nice lodges, mm -hmm. sleep in a nice bed yeah. and so on. Have some coffee and just relax. Yes, yeah. and this is something that can be created without damaging the nature or wasting the nature. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is the kind of economy who has to build. Mm -hmm. Tracking agency, path, map, also services. For example, in Nepal, if you want to be rescued, you have 16 different private helicopter companies. Mm -hmm. Here, no one, mm -hmm. only Ascari Aviation or Army, yeah. and they can do what, what they can mm -hmm. because they have other priority, you know? Yeah. So those are the things you have to work on. And these steps can definitely then improve the situation. Tomorrow, you mentioned that you love being alone on top of the mountains. Once you reach the summit, what, what, what is that feeling like when you know that you're on top of the world now? Yeah, of course, it's a lot of happiness, mm. uh, but at the same time, you need to think about to go down. This is the, the second part. Yeah. The most Which people tend to forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's uh, much more difficult because you're already exhausted, you're mm. tired, then maybe your legs are <laughs> have less power. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so beautiful because you, you come here and you need 40 days, 45 days to to reach the top of a high mountain and mm. it's it's just amazing you just go up step by step and then you are there and you see around this beautiful view and a lot of mountains and it's just you're close to god no, magically yeah. <laughs> yeah so tell, tell us tomorrow as a young girl uh, i know 23 you were the youngest female climber like i mentioned but when you were growing up probably in your early ages were you always fascinated with mountains was this what you wanted to do. Yeah, because I grew up in the Dolomites in mm -hmm. South Tyrol in the north of Italy. So I, w I saw every day the mountains and maybe therefore I'm completely in love with them. Mm. It was in your blood because you, you yeah. Yeah, also my father is a big ski mountaineer. Yeah. So we came here together in Pakistan as well. Mm. And it was a very good experience. Well, young Simone, but tell us about the even younger Simone back then. <laughs> well, I was always dreaming to become a mountaineer because uh -huh. I was going in the Dolomites uh -huh. on the Alps and I was uh, buying uh, climbing books and I always saw this famous name all over the world, Reinhold Messner, Reinhold mm. Messner, Reinhold Messner, that he, he is living in the area where Tamara born. Mm. And so I also, my father and mother told me since the beginning, I said, one day I want to be like him. One day I want to be like him. So now I, I don't know if I can say I became like mm. him, but is, this is my work. Mm. And uh, I probably helped it through this uh, path to open, for example, a second climbing season here in Pakistan, because I had been the first who climbed one 8,000 meter peak in winter in Pakistan. It mm. was Gashem Brun 2 in 2011 and from that year nearly 10 years ago now there is an explosion of winter, winter expedition climbing, yes. yeah and you can imagine if you should start also winter ski expedition because mm. for example you don't have any tradition of skiing mm -hmm. there are very few places where you can go ski in the alps skiing is one of the biggest economic yeah, economy, economy earning so practice. this is another uh, kind of uh, tourism that mm. could be open and develop here. Well, you'll be very happy that uh, the Pakistan Air Force has developed a fantastic resort in Naltar. Naltar, mm. I know that. Yes, they're starting ice hockey, ice skating. They're having a Sadia Cup, which is another very big event. And they're having an international skiing event next year in, wow. in January. Wow, this where, is and nice. they're going to have international skiers there for an international cup. Yeah. So, uh, you know, all of us are dreaming to go there and ski mm. for ourselves. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we haven't had that in Pakistan. You're absolutely right. Uh, but uh, traditionally, uh, like you said, you're absolutely right that the economy and a lot of things can flourish with this as well. And uh, there are hurdles that you need to overcome, especially I would talk about the fact that life often puts you down. Yeah. There are injuries, there are yeah. tragedies uh, that happen during these expeditions. But it's not the physical fitness. You've got to be tough up here as well. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And sometimes you have to stop your climb 
before that is too late. There is a clear example of what she did on Nanga Parbat in 2016 when we realized the first winter ascent of the Killer Mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, there was myself, a Spanish guy, Alex Chicon, a local Pakistani guy, Ali Sadpara, and Tamara Lunger. So we climbed four all together, and he, she decided to stop 70 meters below the summit. 70 meters when you climb more than 4,000 meters. You're meter. like 70s just here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was waving yeah. with uh, Alisa Para on the summit. But that kind of decision saved her life and probably also our life because she went down earlier in the tent and turning on the light, we, we could see the direction where mm -hmm. we have to go because darkness came. So what you mentioned, tragedies sometimes are part of the story of the alpinist. But believe me that not all the tragedy are for casualties. Mm -hmm. Many times the tragedy became from wrong decision made by humans. Mm -hmm. Human error. Yes, yeah, yeah. human error. Because if you, your ego is just pushing you to see the summit and not listen to the signal coming from you, mm -hmm. from the weather, from the time, from the condition around you, this is the biggest danger. Definitely. And yeah. that's what counts at the end, Tamara. Tough decision. But God does everything for a reason. Your light actually saved everyone. Yeah, I, I think like you that there was already a design. Mm. And uh, so I'm now to, to look back, I'm super happy that I was not on the top because I got much more than just a summit. Mm. So I learned a lot about myself. I, I knew how I will react in this kind of situation. And I was still able to be responsible for my life, to, mm. to save my life. And it was probably the hardest moment in my life, but I'm very great, uh, thankful that I was able to live this moment. Mm. And it uh, made me grow a lot and happy to be here. And finally, I must ask you too, how do you see our culture? Have you tried our foods? You know, <coughs> what have you liked over the years? And what, what I can tell you, the mountaineers around the world are all the same. No. So that's why I, I tell you, we feel welcome. Uh -huh. We never get any problem with local people from Shimshal, from Hunza, uh, from in Balti area, in, in Punjab. Honestly, mm. we never get any kind of problem. And I saw the country changing a lot. Yes. Uh, because the first time I came here was 1998, mm. so 21 years ago. I saw the country struggling at the beginning, no? because you have to fight with a lot of wrong press mm. reports. Yeah. And the press can put you Here or, on the, <laughs> or can destroy you. Yeah. And I saw a lot of propaganda. Thanks God I never believe in something that someone tell to me. I mm. want to see. And what we saw here, food, culture and so on is, is wonderful. Also today, for example, we were welcome. We had uh, lunch with some people from army, some people from the other, just welcoming us. They said, thank you, Simone, that you continue, keep going here. Mm -hmm. You are an ambassador. Yes. She is also an ambassador because she's a girl, she's a female. Mm -hmm. They said, nothing I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. Nothing said, I'm happened fine. here. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to keep pushing as your prime minister is doing. Open the door of your home, welcome the people. And when the people come here, they will go home and say, wow, I have a nice experience. Well, you are doing that, Tamara and Simone. I must thank you. I think we're really, really proud of you. And uh, <laughs> you guys are superheroes for us. For me, <laughs> at least, you are. You're really superheroes. Thank you. And Paul. I think all of the youngsters out there seeing you consider you their role models. And maybe one day they can become the next Simone exactly. or next Tamara. This is well. a good thing. You should also welcome the local people to become mountaineers. Yes. Because we are foreign coming here. Yes. I don't see so many Pakistani guys climbing. Mm -hmm. Now climbing activity is also an Olympic sport. Definitely. Okay, so yes. you have just to build an indoor climbing wall and then go also to the mountain. Inshallah. And so thank you so much, Tamara. Thank, thank you, you Simone. Thank you. And I wish you all the best for your future expeditions. And you guys are at home. So yeah. we can thank easily you. say that you are our ambassadors and our people. Right? Thank, thank you very you, much. So it was a great thank having you, you on the show. That's all we have time for for this very special edition of Sports Extra. Tamara and Simone are regular in Pakistan. You can always have a chance to catch them take a nice selfie, get some autographs as well, because like I said, they are super readers for us. And who knows, maybe you can learn a lot from their experiences as well. We're going to leave it at that from me and the entire team. It's goodbye for now.